Hello, welcome back to Energy 101. In this video, we're joined again by Dr. Amanda Graham, the Academic Director for the Irving Institute for Energy and Society. And we'll be talking about the technological and social complexity of our energy systems. Hello again, Amanda. Hi there, Megan. Thanks for having me back. Can we start off by talking about what exactly we mean when we, we say an energy system? And you know, is it more than just generators and pipelines? What's, what's involved in that? Thanks, Megan. Um, once again, I'm really glad that we're starting with the basics, right, um, to, to build a good foundation. So um, when we are thinking about energy systems, you know, we, we use that term a lot, but there's not a lot of clarity in terms of how we define energy systems that are that are out there. People sort of assume that we know what we're talking about when we say energy systems. Um, so uh, a couple of definitions that you might find if you hunt on Wikipedia, right, for this is that um, an energy system is a system primarily designed to supply and services energy services to end users. Right, so that's one way of defining it. Um, it's a supply and demand um, uh, sort of setup. Another definition actually comes from the IPCC, so the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Um, in their fifth assessment report several years ago, they define energy systems as, or an energy system as all the components that are related to the production, conversion, delivery, and use of energy. So everything energy, right, is is what the IPCC defines as um, as energy as energy systems. And I, I want to be mindful that um, that folks hopefully have just come from watching the Lawrence Livermore National Lab video on the Sankey diagrams, which I think is a really incredible tool, really useful tool um, that summarizes energy supply, energy, how we move energy and transform energy, and then the major sectors in which we use energy in this country, and importantly, highlighting the difference between um, how much energy that comes from those sources that is actually going towards fulfilling the functions that we need energy for, so powering our cars, right, or heating our homes, uh, or making our, our manufacturing um, uh, supply chain work, um, and the rejected energy, which is the energy that is wasted that we can't actually get back. Um, and so, so I think that um, that is an important element of how we think about energy systems in terms of flow and in terms of that sort of supply and demand and all the pieces and parts that are um, that are involved in helping us to fulfill our energy services. All right, thank you. So. The Sankey diagram gives us this visual view of energy systems, um, but is there anything that's that important that's missing from that diagram that that we should be talking about here? Um, I love that question because yes, I mean, but despite the fact that I love the Sankey diagrams, what they show, they don't show the people part. And I would um, I would um, argue that those energy system definitions that I just gave you also don't emphasize the people part. Um, they really emphasize more the technology part, right? And so what's missing in a Sankey diagram is who is mining and extracting and generating our energy resources, right? Our fossil fuel sources, our, um, our renewable fuel sources. Um, the, the companies and the, um, you know, the economic objectives of the companies that produce and transport our fuels and our, um, and our energy materials. The policymakers who are making decisions about who and how we are able to supply energy um, and manage and regulate energy um, in, uh, in our um, uh, uh, states, in our communities, in our nations, right? Um, also, re referring back to our earlier video on energy justice, it's not showing who is benefiting and who is paying the, the cost, right, of our energy generation or energy transmission or energy use, right? So we're not seeing the folks who are renting apartments um, and don't have the um, funds to pay their heating bills and are using their ovens to heat their homes, right? They're not showing, the Sankey diagram doesn't show pollution, right? It doesn't show health impacts. It doesn't show cultural impacts of energy on our lives and how our um, lives in some ways are shaped by energy and how we also shape um, energy in our um, uh, in our use of it, how we, how we really shape and make decisions about our um, uh, our energy portfolios and what the implications of that are for how we live. So there's 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 a lot there, but there's a lot missing as well. Okay, so these are these are really important elements of our energy system that we can't really see by looking at a diagram like a Sankey diagram. So are there any ways that we can recognize these social dimensions or the the justice justice elements of our physical energy systems? 
So the, the way that I have um, have learned to try to tackle this is is really in asking questions. And so when we when we look at you know a um, a pipeline or when we look at a generating facility or when we um, look at an energy bill, right? To ask questions that help us to get beyond the um, the obvious or the the um, the specifically physical infrastructure of the energy systems. So questions like. Who owns these facilities and the infrastructure? Who gets the profits from them? Who works at those facilities? Who lives nearby? Right. Who? So who is um, is taking in the impacts of um, of that facility because they they live in that neighborhood? What are the environmental impacts of those facilities? What are the health effects of those facilities? Right. So or those facilities meaning the generating stations or the transmission lines or the distribution lines or the the trucks and and um, and uh, trains that carry our energy from one place to the next. How much do those services cost? Who can afford them? Um, who has access to the services from an economic standpoint? Who actually gets discounts um, for for those services? Um, questions like, um, what's the history of these of this place? Why are the facilities located in this particular um, this particular spot? Um, how did it get here? Who was displaced when um, when it was when it was located there? What jobs do the facilities create? Who gets those jobs, and how well do they pay? Um, what are the stories that we tell about the evolution of our um, our energy sources over time, and how have those impacted the histories of our of our communities? Um, and and importantly, of course, what are the regulations that govern our the various aspects of our energy systems? Right, what governs the facilities themselves, energy infrastructure, um, and energy consumption? Who is involved in that policy process, and then how do those policy processes work? So. Questions like these, and of course many others, start to get at what energy infrastructure means for the people, for, for the people, for the people who interact with it, who live near it, who use what it produces, and they get our focus on where again the impacts are differential on different groups of people. So I would suggest that we redefine how we think about energy systems and move from a understanding primarily of the technology of providing energy um, to recognizing that energy systems are made up of complex interactions of social, environmental, economic, cultural, and technological dynamics, right, of the use and the generation and the distribution of energy. And in, in an in a important sense, energy systems really are about providing energy services, right? So it's about what the energy does for us more than it necessarily has to be about what the energy source is. And so um, keeping that services element of energy systems in the in the forefront, right? We want to emphasize that as opposed to being really dominated by thinking about, you know, what form of energy um, it's it's coming from if we if we can. That's not to say that it doesn't matter, right, whether we're using fossil fuels or renewables or nuclear energy. It does matter, absolutely. But I think that what I'm what I'm trying to get at in as, as we redefine energy systems is that the focus is on what service that we're providing, right? And and ideally how we can do that most efficiently, most environmentally, um, safely, um, and in the most just and fair and equitable way across the societies that are that are using them. Great. Thank you so much for highlighting the complexity of our socio-technical energy systems. This has been really eye-opening. Um, so now that we have this kind of lay of the land, what is coming up next in the series? Well, I'm, it's a, this is a great transition, actually, from this conversation to the next one, because the next one um, is our Irving Institute senior advisor, uh, Dr. Stephen Doig, will be reviewing the fuel, the fuel mix, right? So our, our evolving mix of what sor sources of energy that we're using, right? And so um, we've got this focus on the social part and, and um, how we generate our energy services. Stephen will talk more about um, how that combination of fuels has evolved over time and what we can look for in the future. Wonderful, thank you. Well, I hope everyone is looking forward to that and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.